Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Before I say anything else at all, let me first give a shout out to my mom, Tammy, to my wife, Leslie, to my grandmother, Dot, and yes, even my mother-in-law, Linda. I want you to know that on this day and always, I love each of you. Thank you for loving me. Since it is Mother's Day, today, I'm going to share with you a passage of scripture that reflects the mothering love of God. I know often when we think of God, we think of God as like a father or a parent or like the man upstairs, but Jesus gives us another metaphor too, that God is like a mom that desires to gather their children together and protect them. I invite you to hear this lesson from Matthew 23, read by one of our youth, Kennedy Trentham. Good morning, I'm gonna read Matthew 23, 37 through 39. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now look, your house is abandoned and desolate. For I tell you this, you never see me again until you say blessings on the one who come in the name of the Lord. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I've longed to gather you together as a hen would gather their chicks. Jesus originally said this to the scribes and the Pharisees. The scribes were a group of literate sort of lawyers in Jesus' day that were legal experts. If the scribes were like legal experts and lawyers, the Pharisees then were like law enforcement. They sought to implement the Judaism of the time. The two coupled together were often depicted as opponents of Jesus. And so by the time we get to Matthew chapter 23, specifically our passage in 37, before we even read that, Jesus has spent 36 verses blasting the scribes and Pharisees for their hypocrisy. Jesus describes them as blind guides. He says that they like to put on heavy burdens, religious burdens on people's shoulders that they themselves won't even live up to. Jesus claims that they want to do their religion and faithfulness all for show, for people to see. He even says they're like whitewashed tombs. They look great on the outside, but on the inside, they're filled with death. Finally, when we get to our passage that you just heard, Jesus gives us the summary of why he has issue with them. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he says, how I've longed to gather you as a hen gathers their chicks, but you have rejected the people and killed even some of them that God has sent unto you. The measure of faith, according to Jesus, it seems is not about having all the right beliefs, practices, having all that stuff down. Instead, the measure of faithfulness for Jesus is our capacity to welcome, have compassion for, and protect the people that God has sent unto us. That image and metaphor that Jesus uses, I, I just can't leave it. That image of a hen gathering their chicks together is such a powerful and vivid image of God. I don't know much about chickens, and so I had to research it this week. I've never even owned a chicken in my life, but I, I learned something about them. That there's a, a chicken that is described as a broody hen. Now, I don't know what that meant, so I had to look it up. And what I learned is that a hen becomes broody when it has eggs that it desires for them to hatch. When it has those eggs and it desires for them to hatch, a broody hen will do all it can to protect them. It will peck at you, it will chase at you, it will flap at you, and why? Because it desires to protect the lives that it has been given. Now, friends, that's the God that Jesus believed in. And stop and think about that for a moment. Who is this God that cares after us, that goes after us, that tries to protect uh, so much of the time we think it's all about us serving God. But Jesus gives us the metaphor of a God that also serves us and calls us to do the same. We are reflecting the love of God when we are welcoming, protecting, 
and nourishing the lives that God brings to us. Now, I know it's much easier said than done. Even with the best of intentions, we fall short of this. I was reminded of this powerfully a couple weeks ago when I was out walking my dog, Sally. My, my Sally dog is a golden retriever. She's like a, a small pony in our house. And so it's important that we walk her. And a couple weeks ago, I was out for a walk on a beautiful day. And as I was walking along, I was behind our subdivision. And normally there's no one back there. But on this day, there was someone back there. But not only that, on this day, the neighbor from down the street who has a German shepherd puppy was out there. And so the two of us were getting ready to pass one another. And sure enough, that German shepherd puppy began to pull my neighbor down to my dog because he wanted to meet my Sally. And so there we were, standing there with our dogs next to one another, too close to one another. And inevitably, what we did was we did the polite thing. We shared our names with each other because we had not yet met. And before even thinking about it, the Hoosier and me took over and the Hoosier and him took over. Hospita hospitality took over. And before we even knew it, we shook hands. Immediately, you could see it on our face like, what did we just do? He apologized. I apologized. We went our ways. I went home and washed my hands. I think all is well. Everything is fine. It's been three weeks. But I bring this up because even with the best of intentions, we were just trying to be hospitable. Sometimes we fall short of that. I know I've experienced this lately with the church. Can I be honest with you for a minute? It's hard to know what to do with the church. We want to meet together. We want to get together. Our governor has even said it's okay for churches to start in-person worship on this day. And yet we have decided as Indiana United Methodist and Methodist Temple not to start in-person worship yet. And why? Because we believe that the, the best way to live faithfully and to the God that Jesus describes for us and the God that we believe in is to stay home and practice social distancing in order to protect the lives that we've been given. As we wait to get together, what can we do then, right? Well, the first and most obvious one is that we can remember to celebrate all those signs of God's mothering love in our midst. That's what today is about. It's about celebrating all those ways that people have poured into us that make us who we are on this day. Mother's Day began over 100 years ago with a lady by the name of Anna Jarvis. And Anna Jarvis had lived through the horrors of the Civil War and she believed that the best hope for peace was to get the moms together and to encourage, to, to celebrate, and to inspire them and to, to live into their love that they had for their children. I believe Anna Jarvis is right. Mother's Day is much more than a hallmark moment. Mother's Day is a, is a challenge to remember those signs of love that we've been given, but also a challenge for us to remember that the best hope for, for peace and the best hope for us to move forward is to remember to have compassion and love for each other, even though we might fall short of us. The other thing we can do as we wait for in-person worship is we can hold the people that we care about within our hearts. I came across a quote a couple weeks ago. It's a, a quote from a monk. And this guy's name is like, it's like, he's got like a Gandalf name from Lord of the Rings. His name is Theophan the Recluse, which tells me that he pro probably practiced some form of social distancing even before it was mandatory, or at the minimum, Theophan Recluse was like an introvert on steroids. Anyway, Theophan the Recluse says it this way, when you pray, take your mind, put it in your heart, and there find the face of God. When you pray, take your mind, put it in your heart, and there find the face of God. I've adapted that a bit in the last couple of weeks, and I've tried to take the people that I meet in my lives and, and hold them in my heart space in a, in a literal way. I, I try to surround them there internally with a sense of love. And what I've found is as I do this, the mothering love of God is born even within me. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Amen.